Cebu Provincial Governor Gwen Garcia receives flack on social media after issuing a memo encouraging government employees to practice steam inhalation. Known locally as Tuob, Garcia claims it is a way to fight COVID-19. People online criticized the memo for allowing an unproven health practice to be part of the city's policy against the coronavirus. The practice of steam inhalation is common practice as a home remedy against the common cold, but is not a cure for the virus. WHO Philippines tells Rappler that steam inhalation will not prevent one from catching COVID-19. The memo says, quote, everyone is enjoined to perform tuob, or hot steam inhalation, twice a day, between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., and 4 p.m. and 5 p.m., at their respective workstations. The province is currently under general community quarantine, but the capital itself is within Cebu City, which has the highest number of cases in the country. In related news, Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration Chief Hans Kaktak says the Trust Fund for Overseas Filipino Workers might be depleted by the end of 2021 if the current pandemic response continues. Kaktak says OWA has already spent 1.1 billion pesos in total, mostly for the hotels of returning OFWs, food, and transportation. At the rate this response is going, Kakdak estimates they will be spending around 4 billion pesos to 5 billion pesos more. We're worried about the future. Um, ang estimates po namin, if we will continue to spend for hotel costs and food and transport until December, uh, we will be down to around 10 billion, sir, uh, at the end of the year. By the end of 2021, we will be down to less than 1 billion. Uh, by the end of 2021. Uh, and that's not even assuming, sir, that our reintegration programs will be in full swing. As of Wednesday, June 24, there are 32,295 confirmed cases, 1,204 deaths, and 8,656 recoveries. World number one tennis player Novak Djokovic says he tested positive for the coronavirus after a tournament in Serbia. A spokesperson says Djokovic is asymptomatic. The Department of Justice says there are some indications that dismissed Wirecard Chief Operating Officer Jan Marsalek is in the Philippines. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara says immigration records show Marsalek visited the Philippines last March 3 and departed on March 5. This comes after German media reported missing cash amounting to $2.1 billion in June 2020. Prosecutors may seek Marsalek's arrest over the scandal, now considered the largest fraud case in recent history. Marsalek was in charge of overseeing operations in Southeast Asia. He was booted out of the company due to the controversy. Wirecard Chief Executive Officer Marcus Braun was arrested for false accounting and market manipulation on Tuesday, June 23, but is now free on bail. Philippine banks got involved in the corporate scandal after Filipino lawyer Mark Tolentino opened six euro accounts, supposedly as trustee. The Bank of the Philippine Islands and BDO Unibank deny the $2.1 billion entered their system, but note they are probing rogue employees for allegedly falsifying documents. Tolentino tells Rappler he is a victim of a frame-up and identity theft. Twitter hides a tweet from U.S. President Donald Trump, saying it broke rules over abusive content. In the tweet, Trump threatened to use serious force against protesters in Washington, D.C. Previously, the platform labeled other Trump tweets as misleading and violating its standards on promoting violence. Trump's tweet hidden by Twitter says, quote, There will never be an autonomous zone in Washington, D.C. as long as I'm your president. If they try, they will be met with serious force. Twitter tags the tweet as a violation of rules about abusive behavior, but would remain accessible in the public's interest. Twitter's move escalates the battle between the White House and social media firms, which Trump accuses of bias against conservatives. Trump already signed an executive order which could lead to more government oversight of social media platforms, despite doubts about its legal authority. Twitter's stance is in stark contrast with Facebook, which maintains a hands-off policy on inflammatory content. Meanwhile in Brazil, a federal judge orders President Jair Bolsonaro to wear a face mask in public 
or face a fine of 2,000 rials or $39. The decision also applies to Bolsonaro's cabinet and staff. The case was brought by a lawyer who says Bolsonaro should be held to account for his irresponsible behavior. Masks have been mandatory in public in the capital, Brasilia, since April. Bolsonaro has compared the coronavirus to a little flu. A team of 15 Quezon City policemen are fired after six Chinese citizens who work for a Philippine offshore gaming operator, or POGO, escaped their custody on June 22. The Quezon City Police District says the 15 will face a criminal complaint for violation of Article 224 of the Revised Penal Code, known as evasion through negligence. They would also face administrative complaints, which may lead to their suspension or even dismissal from the service. The QCPD also revoked their firearms. The six are among 342 Chinese POGO workers arrested in December 2019 for staying without working visas. In sports, Philippine Wrestling Revolution stars Crystal and Nina come forward with their sexual harassment stories against former Singapore pro wrestler Alex Cuevas. Nina details on Twitter how Cuevas would make inappropriate jokes, follow her around, and make lewd comments. Crystal also identifies Cuevas as her harasser, but also recounts other harassment stories during her early days in wrestling. After Nina and Crystal's revelations, other female wrestlers and former schoolmates of Cuevas in Singapore come forward with their own accounts of harassment. Singapore Pro Wrestling responds by cutting ties to Cuevas, saying, quote, SBW does not condone matters involving abuse, sexual grooming, and sexual assault. PWR expresses support for Nina and Crystal, saying, quote, We have not been perfect in addressing these issues in the past but we have been taking this as an opportunity to grow, learn, and most importantly, to listen more. In related news, the Philippine Supreme Court fires and bans from government service a cameraman of state broadcaster Radio Television Malacanang, or RTVM. The ban stems from an incident in 2012, where a female colleague filed a complaint for sexual harassment or grave misconduct for an unsolicited tickle on the knee. The Supreme Court forfeits of Verhelt Tabasa's benefits, including retirement. In Hollywood, Hollywood producer and talent manager David Gillard is charged with multiple counts of rape, sexual assault, and kidnapping of four women in California. Gillard is an executive producer on Atomic Blonde and Extraction. Among those who publicly accused Gillard of sexual assault is TED actress Jessica Barth, who says the producer drugged her during a 2012 meeting. Gillard is the latest aggressor exposed by the hashtag MeToo movement in Hollywood, which led to producer Harvey Weinstein's 23-year jail sentence for rape and sexual assault in March. In today's fact check claim, a story on social media saying the office of the vice president donated spoiled food to frontliners in a hospital in Quezon City is false. The false claim also alleges Vice President Leni Robredo's spokesperson, Barry Gutierrez, went to the hospital to offer bribes to sweep the incident under the rug. The claim also cites Robredo supposedly showed up at the hospital. Facebook's monitoring tool called ClaimCheck flagged at least seven posts that contained this claim. In a statement released Tuesday, June 23, the Diliman Doctors Hospital also denied the rumors. Robredo says the incident never happened and urges readers to report the people who spread the rumors. Music